This is the second video showing my attempts to build a three cylinder tank engine. I don't know if it's this long COVID that everyone's rabbiting on about. In the last few days, my brain has been absolute mush. Can't think. Anyway, a few aspirins seem to have got us uh, out of zombie land. And I'm trying to figure out this grizzly conjugated gear for my completely scratch built 084. In theory, this conjugated, grizzly conjugated gear is dead simple. There's a two to one lever, so that's two and that fits one. And then a one to one lever, um, which if the whale shirt's gear was set correctly, magically would uh, sort out the centre valve. I guess that's the theory, the practice, probably because of my workmanship, seems to be somewhat different. Um, one of the issues, of course, is I've built this bloody thing without a drawing, and I've only lately discovered that the, um, the centre line of the cylinders are different, which is to say the centre line of this cylinder to the outside of the frame is fractionally different to the centre line of this cylinder to the frame. Um, which has caused a few complications and um, one of the modern, minor modifications, I don't know if it's helpful or not, that I've made is the one-to-one -one lever isn't quite one-to-one. -one. Uh, in fact I've made this length slightly longer, only a 60,000 I think, slightly longer than this length. And of course that was partly about, and I've not found any references in books. But clearly, as this valve moves up and down, this, uh, this lever is swinging on a radius. And um, although it's very small, uh, theoretically of course, um, the push-pull on this, on this valve rod ought to be in the right direction, not uh, a kind of angular direction. So that's uh, one of the things I've sort of overcome to an acceptable level by marginally increasing this length, really by trial and error. I don't know. Literally, I don't know. The idea for this conjugated valve gear came from uh, a drawing in Martin Evans' excellent book and in essence, according to Martin, the conjugated gear consists of a two to one lever, which is to say this length is twice this length and then a sort of floating arm here, which is in the ratio of one to one, so equal The valve gear to work the middle cylinder, they will call it the third cylinder, is a conjugated affair designed by Sir Nigel Gresley, but I think a lion's share of the work and perhaps a lot of the credit should go to his chief mechanical engineer, a Mr H. Holcroft, I believe. It's about the 10th of October 2021 and after many months of doing nothing with it I've decided to have another go at getting this bit of chaos to do something. I 
Why is it a three cylinder engine? Well, there's no good reason really. And I'm sure it would work better if it was a two cylinder engine. But anyway, the reason really is I've never built a three cylinder engine. So I thought I would have a shot. And the plan is it's uh, got well shirts valve gear yeah, to the two outside cylinders. and a conjugated valve gear to work the middle cylinder. A number of issues have to be thought about and I'm not very good at that. Um, the first of which is where to put this pivot because clearly depending on where that is will affect the the length of the uh, of the two to one lever. Anyway, and this is probably where the root of my troubles began. I decided to put this pivot just slightly off centre of the centre line of the locomotive. The overall length of the one to one lever is determined by the centre lines of the right hand valve spindle and the centre line of the valve spindle to the inner cylinder. So that was sort of fine. However, some practical problems very rapidly arose. The first of which is, of course, that you got to be a bit careful here the way I've done this because the connection to the spindle on the middle cylinder gets uh, mightily close to interfering with this pivot point and perhaps with hindsight that pivot point maybe should have been somewhere else and might be better put to the left of centre line Anyway, I did what I did, so that's where we were. A little bit of filing and everything, the clearances just about work. It might have been helpful if I hadn't made the valve spindle on the centre line of the middle cylinder. I, if I'd have offset the slide valve slightly to the right, the spindle would have moved to the right and these interference problems that arose here perhaps either would not have arisen or wouldn't have been so uh, acute. The next issue that arose for me when I had the first go at making some of these levers was that this one-to-one -one lever actually rocks. And there's no mention of this uh, sort of radius effect in Martin Evans' book. But the lever needs to be uh, firmly attached to the valve spindle of the middle cylinder. And clearly, as the thing rocks, there is an arc which tends to impose... Uh, a fair bit of sideways motion, even in this small scale, a bit of sideways motion on that valve spindle. Um, and that didn't work out very well. Now there's no reference in Martin Evans' book to how they sorted this out in prototype, so I haven't got the foggiest idea. Um, what I ultimately did, after several attempts, is that the two, the one-to-one -one lever is not. You probably can't see it, but this length, this side, is slightly longer, and I didn't measure it, so I don't know because I just did it by trial and error. Is actually this is slightly longer than this side, and the idea was to get a compromise of this attachment point to the spindle for the valve on the middle cylinder. So it's almost one to one but it isn't really. 
Now I've built Welsh shirts valve gear before and I always found it a bit fiddly to adjust but you know, not too difficult. Um, moving the, uh, the return cranks about generally comes to a sort of compromise on valve travel. With a couple of locomotives I've built, scratch built, with Welsh shirts, they work very well actually. So that's fine. What I didn't appreciate, and I don't know why because I've not really got to the bottom of it, what I didn't really appreciate, if you have a middle cylinder and this conjugated gear, altering the position of these return cranks to sort out the outside cylinders, to sort out the outside cylinders, actually, and it's not completely clear to me why, but it does actually affect the timing of the middle cylinder, presumably because, you know, you're affecting the position of the valve buckle up and down, and that has an effect on the middle cylinder. Now, there isn't a huge amount of valve travel anywhere in this locomotive, and uh, certainly not in there. So, if you want steam to go in or out of the middle cylinder, um, this cannot be too far out. The valve travel can't be too far out. Now, I didn't count how many days or weeks or months of my life I spent, because I got fed up with this, and it's been on the shelf for a few months. I spent fiddling about trying to uh, order the positions of the return cranks for the well shirts, to get the outside cylinders to work correctly in order to give um, a degree of correct port opening on the middle cylinder. But anyway, I fiddled and fiddled. Obviously, I have to take the covers off to do this, and I'm not doing that again unless I really have to. Uh, fiddled and fiddled. And I think, probably incorrectly, I think I've arrived at a position of the valve timing with the well shirts gear that actually affords um, correct opening of the slide valve on the middle cylinder. I mean, clearly what's got to happen in every case, as the connecting rod moves to the front of the cylinder, you need to let steam in to push the connecting rod back, and when it gets to the other end, vice versa. I mean, in very simple terms, that's what you're trying to achieve. Uh, and you would think it would be easy, and I'm obviously so dumb, it really wasn't. But anyway. So having, I would say, almost interminably fiddled about with trying to set this valve gear and the conjugated gear and made a bit of a rough uh, reach rod and reverse the stand. The question is, will the flipping thing work? Well, I'm so impressed, I'm almost excited. Will it go backwards? Uh, not quite right here, yeah, because that's not... Yeah, such is the excitement of life. And that's not looking properly. So well that my silly arrangement of air doesn't work. Forward, 
compressor can't keep up with the air consumption. Don't cut too bad either, that makes make a change. Giving it a whisper of air, just a few psi. I have to admit, I'm now mildly impressed by this uh, conjugated gear. I just didn't think I'd ever get it to work. But it must be, because if it wasn't, um, in effect, the middle cylinder would prevent the rest of it from running. Variation in speed is because I'm find it quite difficult to control the air supply with my little lever in. Oh my! I just think that's about the speed I would want to run it if it was ever on the track. Count me unlucky all the time. Well, having got this far, clearly some of this lot needs tidying up. And the links and stuff need pinning to the axles and this, uh, I don't know what it's called, rocking bar or something. Now that's too long, that needs shortening, no big deal. Um, but I suppose I'm going to have to think about some sort of boiler. Apart from anything else. One of the key issues with this uh, conjugated gear is that you can't really afford to have any play, appreciable play whatsoever in the various pivot points because if you do the valve events just go AWOL and by all accounts something I read somewhere, in the last days of uh, prototype steam on British Rail, I mean these are sort of semi-complex engines I suppose, um, there was a lack of maintenance to the conjugated gear so that wear started to take place and uh, there was too much free movement which uh, seriously adversely affected the performance of the uh, of the locomotive so I don't respect I'll ever really run this very much when I get it done if I get it done uh, but certainly that's something to keep an eye on I guess I can't say how pleased I am that I actually got the rotten thing to work